Okay. We're on um, chapter one, lesson five, and we are talking about equations and inequalities and graphing them. These are a little bit different than what you've seen before. And here's why. Because I'm going to give you this, well, first of all, the way you see it looks extremely like, well, there's no y. There's just this long equation with one x. What we're going to do when we're given these types of functions is I'm actually going to split this into two separate functions, two separate equations. The equal sign is going to be the separation. And I'm making two functions because I want to figure out where they intersect. Where the left side, negative 3x plus 20, so let me write that. And where y equals the right side is just 5. Okay, so this is the right side. Here's my left side. I'm going to graph two separate equations. The point of intersection is going to be the solution to both functions. An interval is a segment of the graph. An intercept, we know that. It's either like the x-intercept or the y-intercept. Y-intercept. So, if you have two different colors, I highly recommend that, like a um, black and a pencil, or a blue and a pencil, or a color and a color, whatever. I'm gonna use purple and green. I also really want, a lot of you have already volunteered. Some of you didn't volunteer yet this week. So I would prefer the people to volunteer. You are. Giancarlo, Noah, Mass, Dylan, Emilia, Faith, Quang, Bill, Vincent, Katie P, Eric, Natalie, Josh, G1. Got it? Okay, let's go. Um, if I'm going to graph a negative 3x plus 20, I need to change something on my y axis. Can I get, please, a volunteer? So, Freddie. You volunteered yesterday. I need someone new. Sorry. Uh, Josh, how should I number my y-axis? Because I got to get to 20. Uh, probably by 5. Sure. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay. Along the bottom, I'm just going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It doesn't matter. Okay. It's the 20. It's that y intercept of 20 that's really going to be something to pay attention to. Does somebody want to help me graph it? Where do I begin? How do I rise and run? Uh, for y equals minus 3x plus 20, uh, the y intercept should be 20. And we should. Right there? Yes, right there. And then from there, you should go down three and then oh. move right one. Okay, I went down to 17, right one. From 17, I'm gonna go down to 14 over one. Down to 11 over one. Down to eight over one. That's fine. So connect the dots, la 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 la. Wait, um, Miss Grant, aren't you supposed to be consistent in like that when you go by fives on one, uh, like on the y axis, you're also supposed to do that on the x axis? You don't have to. The problem is, if I did that, my graph would be super smushed all right here. And I'm trying to spread it out to see, uh, to be able to visualize it better. So just because I do, I can, I can change it up. And I did. So yes, you can change it up. 
I don't want a smushed graph with all of the data in this little chunk in the corner. That's why. Um, Miles, oh, wait, you just helped me, I'm sorry. Noah, um, that's green. Now about y equals five, how do I do that? It starts at five on the y-axis and it should be just a straight line. Okay. I care where they intersect. The point of intersection is my solution. It's there. So, I'm gonna do, okay. Let's write this out, this matters. The solution of the equation, the solution of the equation occurs at the x value, the solution of the equation occurs at the x value of the coordinate of intersection. So this is one, two, three, four, five, five comma five. And all I care about is the X coordinate. If I were to plug in five up top here for my X, the left side would equal the right side. When X equals five, the two functions are equal. Okay. All right, turn the page. We're gonna do it again. This time, I have to do an absolute value. So let's talk about it. Here is my absolute value of X parent function, which you should know by now, but I will go through, okay? Negative two, two, negative one, one, zero, zero, one, one, two, two. So I have y equals the absolute value of x minus four and y equals one half x plus one. I'm splitting my given question into two separate. So, Parent function, I don't know that you necessarily need to write down, but I do want to know what the vertex is. That matters to me. Faith, are you volunteering to help me? Yeah. Okay, what's my vertex for my absolute value function? Um, it's four, zero? Yep, HK, four comma zero purple. I'm going to just go by ones here. So I'm good. Okay. Four comma zero is my vertex. Now remember, I just told you the parent function goes because it's absolute value over one up one over two up two. The numbers are the same guys over three up three. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in those dots. And I actually know because I know the answer that I need to extend my uphill portion. You know how this part of my absolute value right here that I'm drawing, this has a slope of positive one. 
because it's uphill. This has a slope of negative one. All right. So that's purple. Absolute value of x minus four. The green. Uh, Miles, you've helped me. Um, sorry, I can't see. Quang. Uh, so the y-intercept is going to be positive one. Yes. And then you're going to go up one over two. So there's one hitting spot, one point of intersection. I'm going to continue on because I know it hits the other side of my absolute value function. Rise one, run two. Up one over two, up one over two, up one over two. Okay. I want to know where it hits. Um, all I care about is my X coordinate. This is uh, two comma two. This is 10 comma six. Okay. So my solutions. are what? I have two solutions. All I care about is the x coordinate of the ordered pair. Um, Vincent, Bill, are you Bill? You have your hand up? Yeah, I'm Bill. Um, no or yes? Yes, yes, I am Bill. Okay. Go ahead. So the uh, solutions would be two and 10. Yep, x equals two, x equals 10. Good. Okay. All right. Problem number three is a little different because it's an inequality and there's no equal sign. So the inequality means that I have to have my um, solutions greater than zero. So I'm not going to draw two separate functions here. I am just going to draw one. And you do realize that if this were HK form, vertex form, it would look like that, right? Just wanna make sure we're all clear. So this is a parabola. And I wanna know, what are the values of X that make the expression greater than zero? That means I want it to be a positive interval. Okay. In case you need it, hoping you really don't at this point, but the parent function of a parabola, you need to have this memorized by now, is this. Because you square the number. So if I plug in two, two squared is four. Plug in one, one squared is one. Okay. I also need to know my vertex. So, uh, KDP. Uh, zero, negative four. Zero, negative four. Good. Okay. Graph it. My vertex is at zero, negative four. 
My. Over one, up one. Over two, up two. Get it? So. Up four. Oh, jeez. Over two, up four. I was thinking about the last one. Over two, up four. So. I could do over three, up nine, but I'm just choosing not to. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make my parabola. It's very smooth, fluid, curvy. But here's what I care about the most. Where is it greater than zero? Where is it at a positive interval? That's right here. I'm making it purple so that we can see that this is the only part I care about. Because check out my question. Where is x squared minus 4 greater than 0? So I need to write it in interval notation. Starting from the left, it goes to where? Volunteer. Positive. Here's, you know, because it goes forever and ever left, up, 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 the parabola does towards negative infinity. But then it stops here. Where is it above the x axis? Anyone? Ronald, you helped me yesterday. Um, Vincent. Um, it would uh, be positive at negative two zero, at point negative two zero. That's where it does hit. You're right. So how do I write it in interval notation? The left hand most part is towards what, and then it stops at two. So I like this, but what do I put here? What's going on over here? Like what direction is it going? Uh, it's going upwards. It's going the, upwards. It's going also to the left. Negative infinity. negative infinity. So here is negative infinity over here. Negative infinity, and then it stops at two. Negative two. Well, oh, negative two. Negative two. Sorry. Picks back up again right here at two and goes right, 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 right. Esther, how do I write that? Um, it's two comma infinity. It is. Okay. That's where my parabola is greater than zero. This only is for when we have inequalities. Okay. All right, I'm gonna turn the page. Next, we have a word problem. A motorcycle is 40 miles an hour ahead of a car. So the motorcycle's driving and it hits the 40 mile mark. Then that motorcycle was going 40 miles an hour. So as soon as the motorcycle hits the 40 mile distance, the car starts driving. The car's trying to catch up the car drives 60 miles an hour. When will the car be ahead? So I want to know when it's going to pass it and then be ahead of the motorcycle. So what I need to do is the first thing is that the motorcycle has a head start. Since the motorcycle has a head start, I'm going to put a plus 40 with the motorcycle because it's already ahead. But now I need to know what's the rate and the time of the motorcycle and what's the rate and the time of the car. And so that's where making the equation comes in. So the motorcycle, how fast is the motorcycle going? And what do I put for time then? No one? 
Well, the motorcycle is going this fast, rate of 40 miles per hour. Do I know how long the motorcycle, um, Noah, do I know how long the motorcycle was riding? Uh, if he's 40 miles out of the car, he's probably been riding for an hour. Something like that, but I'm still not like perfectly 100% sure. So I'm going to keep that as my unknown. 40X plus 40. Now what's the rate times time of my car? How fast was the car going? And what's the, what's, what do I use for time? How long? So this might help you out. Let my X equal the time because I don't know how long each of them go. Okay. So Maribel, what can I put for rate and time for the car? Uh, would it be 60 X minus 40? It would, it would be just 60 X. I've already taken into account the 40 with the motorcycle here. Now, I have these two lines and then a greater than symbol. One of these is faster than the other. Who's faster? Which vehicle is traveling faster? Sam. The car. The car. So I'm gonna put the equation for the car is greater than my equation for my motorcycle. So my car is y equals 60x. My motorcycle is 40x plus 40 motorcycle. Okay, I need to now graph these, but I need to set up my coordinate plane. I need to label things. Like, if this is one, two, three, four, five, and that's one, two, three, four, five, like, what do they stand for? What was my x axis going to be? Because I've got, I know their rates, that's their slope, right? But I don't know time or distance. Where should time go? Where should distance go? What axes? Uh, time should be on the x-axis and distance should be on the y. Time is here. I'm going to just space it out so that it's easy to graph. One, two, three, four. I skipped every other square. One hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. My distance is here. My distance. I got to get all the way. I mean, 40... The motorcycle starts 40 miles away and every hour it's 40, 40, 40, 40. So I need to really get up high. So I'm going to do, how about like, I could do by 40s, 40, 80, 120, 160, 200, not even that sharp anymore, 240. And now I need to graph both. So, I'm going to start with my purple. Somebody help me graph the car purple and somebody help me graph the motorcycle green. New people. That'd be Giancarlo, Mass, Dylan, Amelia, Faith, Natalie, G1, Mass. Uh, for the green one, you would start at 40 and then okay. increase by 40. Yep. Rise 40, run one hour. Up by 40, run one hour. Okay, that's good. This is my motorcycle that I just did. Okay. G1. 
Can you help me graph the purple, the car? Yes, go up by 60. I do, what's my y-intercept? Uh, zero. Okay, up 60 over one hour. So I go up to 40, 60 is halfway between 40 and 80 over one hour. Then I go up 60 more, that's 120 over one hour. 120 plus 60 is 180, that's like in between 160 and 200 over one. The ordered pair where they intersect is two comma 120. Okay. What does that mean for my answer? I have to write my answer in a sentence form. I only care about my X point. Rono? Rono? Yeah. In two hours, the car will be the same. Like, we will catch up to the motorcycle. Yeah. I care about when it's going to be past it. So I really want them after two hours. The car will be past. P-A-S-T, not S-S-E-D, the motorcycle. Wait, isn't it P-A-S-S-E-D, not past, like past, past tense? I passed it. I'm past it. Oh, I wrote will. I, passed, oh. I went past the car. I passed the car. I think it's T. I think it's T. But I'm not an English teacher. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. OK, going on to problem number four. There is this internet website that all of us math teachers love. It's called Desmos. And I have it here, D-E-S-M-O-S, D-E-S-M-O-S. So what I want you to do, and I'm gonna do my best to make this like, hmm. Okay. In Desmos, the first line is you, darn it. The first line is you entering. Now see this little keyboard on the lower left here? The keyboard you can open up and then you can graph using the keyboard with x squared and stuff like that, absolute value. So we're now going back to cut, splitting this in half. Sorry, I need to. There we go. Okay. First equation x squared minus 4x plus 1. Second equation, x minus two. I'm gonna enter those both into Desmos. x squared minus four x, so I'll use my little keyboard down here, minus four x plus one. It's a parabola, obviously, because it's x squared. And then y equals x minus two. So what I care about, okay, and I really do want you guys to be on the website Desmos, okay? Because you need to learn how to use it. What I want to do is I want to know where do the two, where does the parabola and the linear function intersect? I also want to know the x value of that ordered pair. Here's one. x equals 0 0.697.
x equals 4.303. The reason that I didn't have you draw this by hand is because many times intersection points are decimals. It's very rare that they're like perfect corners. So, whoa, it's like magic. So, I want to have you do number five on your own on the next page using Desmos. So clear out, you clear out your formulas by Xing it. And you're going to do negative x squared plus 8x minus 13 for one of them. And you're going to do the absolute value of x minus 4 for the other one. So go ahead and do that. I'll give you a second, a minute, something like that. Someone new? Um, Alexis, I've heard from you this week. Someone else, guys. New people on Desmos, what did it say? I've, okay. Here's the deal. The, there's like five people that haven't volunteered. Um, it got to get on it, guys, because it's points every week. It's points every week. They are 2.697 and 5.303. Those are the x values of the coordinates where they intersect. Okay. We won't Wait. be. Doing, yeah. Uh, Miss Grant, it says to the nearest tenth, so wouldn't it be 2.7, 1.3, and nearest then 5.3? X equals 2.7, X equals 5.3. Good. Okay. All right.